So Saturday, May 8th, the moon will be in Aries all day. This is, again, another blast of energy, really pushing us to be bold, to be confident, to kind of share our emotions uh, with those that need to hear it a little bit more aggressively. We do have nine moon aspects taking place here today. A couple of them I do want to talk about. I don't want to talk about them all, but the moon makes an aspect within pretty much 15 minutes of each other with Pluto and with Mars. So here's the thing. Mars rules over Aries and Pluto gets along very well with the Aryan energy because they have a common denominator, which is Scorpio energy. Scorpio is ruled over by Pluto by Mars. So having a commonality between, you know, that Mars energy and that Aryan energy is talking about bringing new life to something. So the Plutonian energy is saying, hey, here's where you need to end something. Here's where you need to like cut the cord and provide a, a certain death to something. Why? Because you need to be free. Why? Because your future self, the dreams and the visions that you've been praying for can't be delivered to somebody still attached to these habits, to these obsessions, to these relationships, to these situations. The moon squares with Mars. This is a tension point. Mars very much frustrated as hell sitting in cancer waters. He does not enjoy that at all. Very connected to the home, to the family dynamic, having his boundaries tested, realizing where it is that he needs to take care of himself, take action to actually make changes, to make sure that he has the time and the energy to take care of himself instead of consuming himself with everyone else. So there's an aha moment going on here, a deep transformation, a deep revelation taking place in the heart space, first and foremost, then the mental plane, because the, the Plutonian energy is very zoomed in on the psyche. And of course, with that Aryan energy in the moon, we're fired up, we're passionate, we're bold, we're very much ready to take action now and worry about the consequences later, which isn't recommended, by the way. The moon sextiles the true node, which tells me that the transformation, the revelations, the aha moment, the developments taking place in our lives right now are leading to a positive change where our future selves are going to be very appreciative for the energy and the further efforts that we're currently putting into our day to day life and our day to day realities. The moon conjuncts sits next to Chiron in Aries also in the cosmos. And this tells me that there's an emotional charge taking over, an intensity taking over, almost like all the things that we were caught up in emotionally. Uh, suddenly we don't care. We're, we're ready to cut the cord. We're ready to say, you know, bygones be bygones. We are ready to say, screw it. I don't care about that. It is what it is. I'm moving on, which does bode very well for the progress in which we're currently making towards the end of this week. Because again, the full moon in Scorpio that we experienced last week is now reaching its halfway point. We're definitely seeing a lot of the triggers that needed to be triggered come into fruition, come into our realities, and now we're able to do something about it. The moon continues to make an aspect with Uranus, with Jupiter, with Saturn, with Venus, and with the sun. This screams of pushing forward. Again, the moon in Aries wants to be aggressive, wants to be bold, wants new experiences, wants to feel differently, wants to express itself, even if it's anger, right? That is the shadow part of that Aryan energy, which we have to watch out for. But this is like us charging forward, especially emotionally processing everything now at such a high rate. Again, we have Mercury now in its place of power in Gemini, ruling over the mental plane, allowing us to process the information of the past, present and the future at such an accelerated rate that our heart space is trying to fine tune and align with the changes going on in our mental state. So outside of all the moon energy going on here today, we have a couple of very important aspects. We have Venus, who before moving into Gemini, so this is Venus's last hurrah, well from the throne in Taurine energy, she decides to square a tangent point. She calls out Jupiter and Jupiter again, growth, expansion, silver linings, magnifying the issues that are at play that we have to push ourselves past. So Venus squaring with Jupiter is almost like we're in love, like everything is fine, everything is happy, let's do a dance. Now we might overdo this, we might be too much, we might just be totally under a delusion 
of this particular energy because we're so focused in on the silver linings that we forget maybe about what we have to be cautious about the pain the trauma making sure that we're not repeating bad scenarios bad habits that we're not doing you know toxic behaviors of sort but venus making this tension with jupiter in her her last hurrah in her place of power this is like your heart is filled everything is fine. Even if things aren't fine, this is the mood that you're going to take on. Everything is fine. Everything is good. We're just going to deal with it. Of course, that moon in this Aryan energy wants to just, you know, charge through anything anyways. It doesn't even want to stop to contemplate the long-term consequences of its actions. It just wants to blaze through. Nothing's going to stop this moon in Aries. It's just going to push forward, take the leadership role, bust down any of the walls, any of the obstacles in which we're currently facing. And of course, Venus being high on her power for the last time for a long time this particular aspect with jupiter is just grandest it is just magical it is just euphoric and i'm going to throw a caution to you don't make any decisions because you're not in your right mind you are too fluffy too light too rainbows and butterflies and likely not acting practical not acting logical at all so avoid decisions, especially where love is concerned, especially where money matters are concerned. Just avoid it. So after she makes this beautiful, magical aspect with Jupiter, she then transitions and moves into Gemini. Again, reach out, listen to May's energy forecast, download your Zodiac monthly forecast to figure out how Venus in Gemini is going to be affecting your life. Basically, Venus, who's still focused on love and money and self-worth and value and long-term planning, she moves into the intellectual side of life. She wants to bust out of the restrictions of her physical experience. She wants to move into the mind. She wants to tap into different ideas. She wants to be a little bit more social, align with like-minded people. She wants to enter into debates with unlike-minded people just to play devil's advocate and see where their values are. She wants to expand her mind through the physical relationship of engaging with people of all walks of life. She wants to learn new things. She wants to open her mind. She wants to switch up her perspective. This, if you are single, you're likely going to be attracted to people that have an intellectual type of attraction instead of a physical attraction. That physical attraction very rooted with Venus in Taurus. When she moves into Gemini, we're attracted by the way that people think. We're attracted by the confidence and the clarity that they have using to express themselves. And even if you're not single and in your, you're in a relationship, you're going to notice that communication styles change. We definitely want to be more vocal. We definitely want to talk and kind of, you know, socialize a little bit more. But we also want to put in our put ourselves in positions where not only can we learn from other people through their experience, through their belief system, through their opinions, what it is that they're currently creating as their reality. But we also want to position ourselves in a role of knowledge and experience where we can teach people a couple of things about ourselves and maybe open their minds to a different way of thinking. So it is going to be a lot of pressure in the mental plane. And again, a lot of pressure in the heart space because the moon is definitely in Aries, firing things up, very intense, very passionate about jumping into new experiences, letting bygones be bygones. And then, of course, Venus moving into Gemini really opens the mind up to dabbling into new things, dabbling into new experiences, plucking the ideas and the thoughts out of other people's minds and in the minds of ourselves. So that is your energy forecast for May 2nd to May 8th. We're getting off. We're getting May off to a very, very good start. And again, time, energy, space will be picking up, really moving at an accelerated rate, especially mid-month. So we want to prepare for that. We have some major activity taking place this month. And again, just a reminder, that's why I want you to go ahead and inform yourself. Sign up to the energy guide. It's free if you haven't done so already. Sign up to the moon guide if you haven't already. There are all kinds of subscriptions out there. You can find them all on my website designed to help you through each and every stage of this evolutionary process. I want to thank you so much for tuning into this week's energy forecast. I hope you have a beautiful week and we'll talk to you soon.